Hey guys, welcome back to more AFK Arena. In today's video, we're checking out Palmer. I'm a little bit late on this one. Just to update you guys, I haven't made a video in about a week on any of my channels. I've just been super sick, completely lost my voice, couldn't speak. And on top of that, I was trying to move house whilst being wrecked. Uh, and for someone who normally sleeps five to six hours a night, uh, last night I slept 14 hours. I absolutely crashed at like 6 p.m. Uh, so just been absolutely wrecked, but we are back into it. I'm feeling better now, starting to get the voice back. So we are going to be checking out Palmer. Palmer. Now, the one thing that I love about this guy is that he does have the book. I've been doing a rewatch of Black Clover because I've been playing in the beta of that game. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm all about the books at the moment in Black Clover. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry. Uh, this guy, the design, you know, I'm not a massive fan of this design personally. It's just, it's a bit, it, it, like, you, you just look at him. It's like a little head bobbing out of a coat. But when he does his animations, it looks a bit better. Um, but yeah, like, I, I love AFK Arena designs. And one of the things that I love about the designs in AFK Arena is that they're not afraid to do, like, just different sort of stuff. And to me, this is very different from what you see in Gotcha Games. So props to this character. I think he's going to be a decent bossing unit for bosses. I think he might be too slow for campaign, but we'll have to wait and see. That's just my first impressions but we're going to go through the skills today and i'll come back uh later tonight and we'll do a testing video with him but let's jump in and take a look so let's expand these abilities and look at the big ones once again confusing text uh i think they're just trying to stump me now with all the text in the game uh and um they're doing a good job of it because i get screwed by all the text but let's see how we go uh he follows the guidance of the divine light and blesses one other allied hero uh allied hero with the highest attack uh who has not been blessed so this is very much like uh mortis he's gonna buff one then the next one then the next one then the next one and he buffs them until the end of the battle the blessed ally uh heroes have their crit damage amplification increased by 15 points plus 150 percent of palmer's palmer's initial critical damage amplification so that's i believe his if you just look at his stats before you go into the game it's 150 percent of that i under as, as i read that uh, if this skill is used while all allied heroes are, are already blessed, the illumination summoned by Parma will deal damage equal to 240% of his attack rating to the enemy hero with the highest attack rating five times. So it becomes a very, very high multiplier damage. So that's why I think he's going to be a bossing unit because he is going to stack this onto each ally. So eventually he's going to get around to each ally. And then he's going to, on top of buffing all the allies for their damage, he's going to going to deal some really good damage with his ult past that so like i said in bosses i feel like that's where it's going to shine let's go level two increases physical physical pierce or magical pierce of the blessed allied hero by 15 points plus 150 percent of his magical pierce according to the type of damage they receive cool beans so physical units will get the the, the physical pierce magical units will get the magical pierce uh, while using uh, Illumination, Palmer recovers 15% of his max health and heals the blessed allied heroes for the same amount. So I believe the Illumination is only when everyone has been buffed. So after everyone's buffed, he's not only going to be dealing extra damage, he's also going to be applying heals. Really, really solid ability in one. Okay, next up, Sacred Scripture. Palmer alternates between reading out these two things um words are tough for me uh the first one deals damage to enemies equal to 200 percent of palmer's attack rating and reduces their attack rating reduces the attack rating of the enemy hero with the highest attack by 20 percent. once again handy for bosses reducing that attack uh, the other one targets the allied hero with the highest attack rating. If their energy is lower than 600 points, their energy will be restored by 80 points. Otherwise, the damage they deal will be increased by 15% for the next 8 seconds. So you're either getting energy on your main damage dealer or you're boosting it. So you can picture this. He's a light bearer as well with Scarlet. This is going to be really solid. Uh, this buff can be stacked up to 3 times. Uh, Sacred Scripture serves uh, as his normal attack. So basically, this is his normal attack. Uh, increase the damage up to 220%, uh, increase the energy restored to 120 points, and increases the damage dealt uh, by that one to 240. So that is that skill. Moving on to the next one, like, and just based off those two skills, that being his auto attack and his ult being what it is, I think he's got great viability. Once again, in bosses, I'm going to shut up. Uh, okay, so the next one, Power of Light. At the start of battle, he begins to, uh, to pray. This reminds me a bit of Irons in a way. 
Becoming immune to control effects, the prayer heals, heals, heals nearby allied heroes uh, 80% every 1.5 seconds, each time adding one stack of faith to Parma up to 10 stacks. Each stack of faith increases the attack rating and defense rating of nearby allied heroes by 3% and 3% of Parma's initial attack rating and defense rating, respectively. So you got the base 3% plus 3% of his base stats. Okay, I'm rereading this bit because I butchered it before. Uh, the prayer ends when Palmer's faith reached maximum stacks uh, or the total damage he receives during the prayer exceeds 60% of his max health or there are no surviving allied heroes left. So those are the three conditions on which the prayer ends. Uh, after his first prayer ends, the attribute buffs will apply to all allied heroes. Uh, then we go into the health restored is 100. When praying ends, Palmer will heal the nearby allied heroes for 30% of their lost health. When And then this is going to be the 30 engraving. When uh, praying, uh, Palmer heals nearby allied heroes for 100% of his attack rating every one second and gains one stack of faith up to 15 stacks. Okay, so that's not too bad getting the 15 stacks there. All right, here we go. On to the final one. This is... This is Brutal abilities to read, I'm not going to lie. During battle, if there are at least two surviving allied heroes, the damage received by the allied hero with the lowest health will be reduced by 40%. The reduction in damage will be distributed among other allied heroes. This damage cannot kill them. Over the next five seconds, 60% of the distributed damage will be recovered. The first time an allied hero dies, the other allied heroes will immediately recover all the dis all the distributed damage and will receive 30 percent less damage for the next five seconds so it's a, it's a very long-winded mitigation ability essentially with some recovery off the spread out damage um then skill ups the first time an enemy hero that kills the first enemy hero that kills an allied hero will be punished by the divine light reducing their attack rating and energy recovery rate by 30 percent and 30 percent respectively for five seconds this effect cannot stack uh then we get 80 percent of the health loss from distributed okay will be recovered and then for 60 engraving the first two enemy heroes that deal damage to allied heroes will be punished by the divine light getting this effect so that's honestly not too bad because all they have to do is deal damage you don't need someone to die to get it so the 60 engraving not too bad don't know how relevant it will be uh, but we'll have to wait and see moving on signature item x Ex exalt the light when palmer reaches the maximum number of faith stacks he increases the crit rating of all allied heroes by 10 uh by 10 plus 40 percent of his base crit rating not too bad because crit rating is going to be nice considering he's going to be uh, increasing the crit amplification and stuff like that. Once Palmer's faith is maxed out, he will heal all allied heroes for 100% of his attack rating every three seconds. Sounds like a passive pulsing one, not too bad on the heals. When Palmer's faith is maxed out, whenever an allied hero deals damage to an enemy hero and their crit rating exceeds the enemy's crit block rating, by at least 100 points, the damage dealt will be increased by 1% for every one excess point. So you really want to stack uh, the crit rating versus their crit block, and then you get amplified. I don't know in campaign how heavy the crit block. I don't know in bosses. So that's something I don't know. I have to ask people smarter than me to find out if that is actually going to have any effect. And then at level 30, after ending a prayer, Palmer may pray again in 10 seconds if, he, if his faith is not yet max stacked. So it just gives you a more reliable way to try and max out those stacks. Okay. Furniture, and then we're then we're gonna have a look at his skills, dude. New characters are getting tough for me. Jeez, all right. Uh, fault, faultless is that say yeah, faultless faith. While praying, while Palmer is praying, any excess energy he accrues will be saved. The next time he uses ultimate, he will recover the saved energy over the next five seconds. Not too bad. Not too bad to get him to start buffing allies quicker. So that's that's actually pretty solid. I like that. Uh, when Palmer pray, uh, when Palmer prays or uses his ultimate, the divine light will cast a sacred scripture on his behalf automatically. Now, sacred scripture. That's this one. Which one's that? Oh, okay, not too bad. That's that one. So you're gonna get the um the buff to your ally with the highest attack. That's pretty solid. That's pretty solid. But that's just a basic attack that replaces. So he casts an extra basic attack. Essentially, is what I'm reading off of that. All right. Once again, in general, just in in general, like all characters lately, just completely baffling descriptions. Not really. That one wasn't too bad. 
Maybe it's just me because I'm bad. But uh, let's take a look at his heals. So this is his prayer at the start where he does the repeated healing. Now from back mid, it looks like he's going to heal everyone. Which is solid. And then we'll wait for this to end. Uh, is he stacked? Yes. So there's the basic attack on the enemy. There's the basic attack on the ally. Now he's done the ult, which buffs the ally. And you can see the buff on the ally from the ult from there. And then you can see his basic attacks, just one's going to deal damage and reduce attack. And then one's going to buff the ally. Now that guy, unfortunately, the one when he does it on the ally, because he's at max energy, it doesn't actually show you that their uh, damage is getting increased, but that's what's happening. Otherwise, they would be gaining energy. And that's pretty much essentially it. They've both got it now. So then you can see, okay, let's get to his other ult again. So once it, once he's blessed both allies with his ult, you'll see that he does some nice damage. Boo, boo, boo. And it's randomized. So if you kill someone, that's cool. That's going to be really good for bosses, multiple strikes. Not too bad. All right, let's jump over into this one and just take a look. See what we can do here. I think back mid is the ideal spot for him because uh, I feel like that's where he's going to just be blessing everyone. Uh, let's just like put in... It's the back row. I can't, I can't want to do a... Let's do a Sor Can we do a Saurus carry? Uh, let's do all the light bears first. Let's do that, 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 that. Okay, let's do that. Can we put him there? Uh, that's not ideal. I kind of want to do my Gwyneth. Let's drop you. Let's do it like that. Let's just t test this. Let's just see. We don't really have damage in the team. I just wanted to stretch the fight out and just see what happens. Maybe, maybe he pairs kind of well with Sonya because she stalls out, but she doesn't stall out strong enough. That's the problem. Her mitigation just isn't high enough. Uh, the enemy Mara is going to nuke our Mara and then we're going to be screwed. And keep in mind, these fights are not at a deficit at all. So really, you should be just spanking these stages. I mean, it's, it's hard to test a healer like because I, 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 I don't even know what we're testing for. We should just put in a damage dealer. Uh, to be fair, I, I once again, I feel like <coughs> Sorry, once again, just did not 100% yet, but I, I feel like he's one of those ones where it's like, you're just gonna get, we're just gonna have to get him maxed out, throw him in some bosses and see how he goes, and then it's gonna be clutch in certain, uh, may, maybe, maybe he can work like a substitute type of mortis in some situations, um, you know, get that buff on your main damage dealer and let them nuke, we'll have to wait and see, but, uh, that is him once again, I'll come back later tonight with some testing, but, uh, let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching. Hope you have an awesome day and I look forward to seeing the next one. Cheers.